Fish Bros, Bros. Fish Bro Adventures. We going outdoors. Yeah. Get ready to explore. Let's go. Fish Bro Adventures, man. I'm here at Urban Tactical. I have a seminar going on. It starts from 6.30 till 7.30. I'm here with Todd uh, for City Cats. I guide for City Cats as well. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna talk about spring catfish, spring walleye fishing, maybe some um, so, some ice fishing still, because it's still within season. We got another month now. So we're gonna be talking tips, tactics, what we use, the electronics we use. I'll be talking about the Mega Live that I have. See you guys in a bit. I be fishing, you know I be fishing. Hey, come and tune in to the Fish Bro Adventures. We be out in Manitoba. Come kick it, time to hang with us. We ice fishing, you know I'm a master angler. Hey, fish Bros, Fish Bro Adventures. Jomar, what you catch? Lake Winnebago, Green Bass, hey. Fish Bros, Fish Bro Adventures. We going outdoors, get ready to explore. Let's go. First time? Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, this is our first time we've run one of these uh, community sessions and that's the whole idea behind Urban Tactical is, you know, we're a community of, of people that love to have the outdoors and this is just our first uh, in, in induction into having some of our speakers. So we're going to be doing these on a regular basis. So please check social media, follow us on social media, through Instagram or Facebook and you'll learn more about these as, uh, as we go on because we've got some really cool stuff to bring to uh, Winnipeg and to the community. So starting off with fishing, we've got an exciting one. Jomar and Todd, and we'd like to thank you guys very much for coming down, and we'll turn it over right now to uh, Todd and Jomar to present some time. First off, uh, me and Jomar would like to welcome you guys all for coming out and supporting us. One of the, the biggest things us guys worry about is, I hope somebody comes and fills the chair. <laughs> Seriously, I'm on the phone. Are you coming tonight? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. So. I appreciate all you guys for coming. It's, it means a lot to me. Um, second of all, uh, once again, happy International Women's Day to all you women out there. Uh, give all these guys, let's give the women a great hand. So today, me and Jomar here, we're gonna talk about fishing on the Red River uh, in springtime, and two of our favorite species to catch are the uh, channel cat and the walleye. The uh, greenback walleyes, are up still in the river. They're uh, they're finishing their spawning and they're slowly uh, making their way back to the lake so you can get into some good walleye fishing. But also, the channel cats are in there big time and you can start slamming them right away, especially up to the locks and stuff. So that's what we're gonna be uh, talking about today. Here guys, I've got the mega lights, the newest thing going right now. Okay, uh, these sonar locators now from five years ago. These are still pretty new. This is about maybe three years, three years since when this technology came out. It's alive, it's, it's, it's called the live. And uh, you can actually see the fish. You, you can go into forward mode, down mode, landscape mode, and you can actually see these fish real time. So as if, like let's say if I were under the water or under this transducer, you would see my body swimming underneath. That's how accurate these machines are. Now we're gonna talk uh, rods and reels next for channel cats. Now, this is uh, a Talora. So it's like an eight foot, uh, medium heavy. It's two piece because, you know, eight and a half feet's pretty, or eight feet's pretty long. And so I like to break them down at the end of the day and put them in my uh, rod compartments. The reason why this rod was suggested is it's got a soft tip. Just like, you can, you can see the channel cat take it. And I call it the three hip rule. Uh, the cat will come in and he has barbels and, and he can taste the water and he'll smell it and he'll come for it, right? They got amazing sense of smell to make up for their uh, poor eyesight and channel cat have poor eyesight, but they have the lateral line and they have amazing sense of smell and they have the barbels. So they'll actually taste the bait before they eat it. So you'll get the three hit rule. You'll, you'll get these tap taps. Now, if you set the hook on the taps, you may lose the fish because it won't be in his mouth yet. You wait for the, the rod to load up. And when I mean load up, the rod needs to start bending down. And when the rod bends down, you set the hook. And uh, these anchors are pretty good. They're not bad. Um, in current, these are really great. You would throw them out. You would let probably 20, 20, 25 feet of line out because you don't want this in an angle where it would pull out. What this cat tail does is if it gets, if it gets jammed, you would, drive, uh, you would drive up to it, so come with a chain, and you can actually reverse. Reverse it out and yank it up this way, 
right? Some of these anchors that are hooked like this don't have that. So you pretty much, if you're just trying to yank from here, you're just digging it in more. Guys are using using their clevises on their boats, uh, which is a bad thing. You don't want to rip the clevises off. I see them trying to reverse it out, forcing, forcing this out. And they'll wreck your boat. You don't want to do that, right? So that's, I guess that's why they actually use uh, this style is that so when you go over it, you go on the other side of where you anchored, start yanking out. What this does is it yanks it up from the backside, right? Just like a hook. Same thing, but these are great. These are awesome. They don't bend out. Um, these are made by uh, Cattail Anchors here. They're a pretty uh, reputable company. Um, I'm a welder, so I can see that it, it's built well. So if you guys ever think about getting these, these are awesome. And they do detach nice, um, you can store them away nicely. Can I just pop off as a pin here? Pop off. If you store this in your in your cubby, so you just store. If you, if you were to store this in your cubby like this, you get a chance of puncturing a hole in your boat. If you hit a big wave, you don't want that. There's no way you want that, right? So, yeah, that's how it works, guys. It's pretty cool. Also, with having, uh, I always have two anchors in my boat. Um, so anchors are great. So what I usually do is I'll throw one of the anchors at the front of the boat. So the back part of the boat is facing down river with the with the current. Now say the wind is blowing this way. It's blowing at the side of my boat. So my boat's fish tailing all the time, right? Like, and my, my line is dragging and it's driving me crazy and it's snagging all the time. I can take anchor number two and I'll have it at the back of the boat. So wind, then I'll angle the boat this way and then I'll throw out the anchor and then I'll let out some rope and then I'll cleat it down. All of a sudden I've neutralized the boat. The wind's not gonna push my boat this way anymore because that anchor's holding it on the side. So all of a sudden you're perfect again, even in the wind. So it's always good to have two anchors in the boat. So you, as you can see, there's greenback walleyes. Does anybody know why the walleyes are green? Limestone in the north. Yeah, yeah. Limestone in the north. You like, look like a man who enjoys a beer. <laughs> yeah, the limestone. Also, yeah. Also, we have huge algae blooms in Lake Winnipeg as well. And there's certain areas on the lake where the water is really deep, and those walleyes actually will turn to a turquoise color. They're just yes. beautiful. And the walleyes are, are becoming more vibrant now because well, there's these little critters in the water called zebra mussels, and they're actually making the water a whole lot cleaner and clearer. And we're, we're now getting perch in the river, and the perch colors are unbelievable now. Whereas before they were a muddy color, now you're seeing the lines, you're seeing the orange, like all this is really crazy. And we're getting them in the, in the fall time on the river. We're even watching fish fall, big walleyes follow saugers up to the surface as well. It's really cool now. Um, but yeah, walleyes, like, like, like you said, um, limestone and uh, also algae blooms will turn them this beautiful green color. Okay, so a walleye, uh, walleyes are a pretty cool fish. They can trap sunlight in their eyes, they can see better than other fish in the water. Also, they have a lateral line on the side uh, right here that here's a better view of it. And that lateral line helps them to feel vibrations in the water where they can track schools and minnows and follow them and have a good feed as well. And in the springtime, the walleyes are in making baby. And here's the deal with walleyes. We don't want to disturb them till they're done. So the new rules and regulations now is you can continue fishing. You, you don't stop fishing like in April, you can continue to fish, but you can't target the walleyes till I believe mid-May sometime, then you can start fishing for them but uh, let them finish breeding because walleyes can lay over a, a million eggs, but only one or 2% of those eggs will survive to become, or those fish will become full grown adult uh, walleye. These are the kind of jigs I like to use. <coughs> flasher jigs, right here. I know Jomar likes the flasher jigs oh, I love it. Oh yeah. yeah. They're amazing, they got a little willow leaf on them and they sort of sit off the bottom and you jig them up, they go back down and this willow leaf gets agitated and sometimes it catches the sun and the walleye just loves them. Um, For walleye, um, the new rule is you can't catch anything under 14 inches, so that must go back even if it touches, please don't chance it. Let's talk a little bit about jigging techniques. I'll be sitting in the boat and Joe Mars out fishing me and it's driving me crazy. I want to like, every time he gets a hit, I want to smash his rod with my rod, right? Because He's out fishing me. Um, but I don't do that. Instead, I'm 
see what Jomar is doing. And me, I'm, I'm jigging a little faster. And he's jigging really slow. And he's getting all the hits. Another thing too is Jomar could have found a nice little rock underwater that he's smacking his jig against. And that slight little noise is making those walleyes come over. So you want to watch in the boat what other people are doing. Because there's a reason why they're catching more fish than you. And it could be just your presentation of, of you jigging, right? I like to get out early, early in the morning while, the, while it, it's still dark out. And I like to get on my spot. Because the fish seem to like stage overnight. And then in the morning, they start to move out a little bit. Um, so I like to get out there early, have my coffee. And I'm waiting as soon as the sun starts to rise. And it used to be you had to wait a little longer, but now that the water's a lot cleaner than it used to be, you don't have to wait as long. Those walleyes can see your jigs at, uh, just, just as the sun's starting to rise, and you can start smashing them right away. I don't really use crankbaits for trolling. I usually set my uh, my trolling motor up. I, I still use a flasher jig because it still has that will. I like going against the current. What it does is it slows my boat down, and it keeps my bait off the bottom. I like to... Uh, let some line out, pound it out, start feeling the bottom, just bring it up slowly. Hit the bottom, bring it up slowly. Because when you pound that sediment or that dirt off the bottom, they get curious. They really do with any. As soon as they see that come out of that cloud, that's when they'll slide it. Bang. Now we're going to play heads and tails, okay? I'm going to mess with you guys, all right? And the way it works is this. This is for the last anchor. Everybody stands up, okay? And you're gonna, I'm gonna flip the coin. I'm gonna go one, two, three. You're gonna pick. You either put your hands on your head or on your butt. You look good at that. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So when I go one, two, three, hands on your head or on your butt, and I'm gonna flip the coin, and then I'm gonna mess with you, and it's process of elimination to the last person standing, okay? So one, two, three, pick. Hands on your head or on your butt. Okay, here goes the coin. Okay, one, two, three, pick. <laughs> so we got two tails and a head. So you know what that means, right? If, if we get tails, there's a playoff. And if it's a head, you're the winner, okay? Congratulations, you won an anchor. Did you? <laughs> Anyways, once again, guys, I. Uh, it's the end of our seminar. I would like to thank Urban Tactical for having us here today. Uh, this is, you know what? I had my questions midweek. Never done midweek seminars before. Always done them on the weekend. And we got almost, we got, we had to bring more chairs out. We didn't have enough chairs, which is pretty awesome. Um, also, I'd like to thank Jomar, my fishing guy. He's loyal. He always has my back. Loyalty is hard to find in this world. Let me tell you. And he's loyal, buddy. Appreciate that. And uh, to all you guys who support us and came out here today, it means a lot to me. Thank you very much. And that's it for our presentation.